Top five Hello. failures of the CIA. Five famous musician and domestic violence enthusiast, Chris Brown. While I bear a passing resemblance to notorious alcoholic madman DJ Peach Cobbler, we simply cannot be the same person. Because I wear earrings, which I won off a woman in the heat of battle. And I did not commit crimes against humanity in the Balkans. I've been contacted by the Central Intelligence Agency of America to speak to you, the American public, on the matter this? of this video. As researchers found that the American public trust celebrities. This is a terrible mistake. I will hurt you. I do not acknowledge that you are human. Due to the content contained within this video, it has been deemed unsuitable for general audiences. You should only watch this internet video if you meet the following criteria. 1. You are currently gainfully employed. 2. You I mean, top five c failures of the CIA seem awesome. Do not consume subversive literature. 3. You are over the age of 25 if you are male, and 21 if you are female. And 4 you would agree with the following statement. Censorship is required to keep the public safe from dangerous ideas. If you meet these requirements, then you have been permitted to consume the following content. If you do not meet these requirements, then it is already too late. We would like to thank you for your time and patience, as this video contains delicate material which may upset, anger, or even radicalize the borderline subversive. Thank you. This has been playing on my TV for like the past week straight. I is not hooked up to anything. That's clearly me, right? So before we get this video started, I would like to be clear. I will be sharing verified information, exclusively verified information, either released by the government or admitted to by the government after journalists expose them. Don't get me wrong, I will speculate on occasion but on those occasions, I will include the following disclaimer. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's the old one. That's outdated. The CIA released a new and far more woke discrediting disclaimer in 2012, and we will be sure to use that. That's better. I mean, it, it could be worse, honestly. Uh, between the years 2001 to 2012, it, the disclaimer was just the word TERRORIST in bright flashing letters. From the Cuban Missile Crisis to the Iraq War, from the Bay of Pigs to the shores of Indonesia, the CIA is a Tila Tequila magnitude embarrassment to the United States of America. And today, we're going to dissect their top five most exceptional failures. What the fuck happened to the audio? The CIA was founded in 1947 as a part of the National Security Act. The CIA, as an organization, gave the American populace the... How do I put this politely? The heapy fucking jeebies. What the fuck? What? What's gonna separate this government agency from the Gestapo or the KG fucking B? We don't know what they're doing? This is a democracy. It's built on the fact that we should know what our government is always doing. So, it was included as a part of the CIA's charter under which they were founded. They were not, under any circumstances, to operate on American soil. They were exclusively to operate on foreign soil. Now don't you worry, my few foreign viewers who are like, damn, we get the secret police and America doesn't? <laughs> we got the secret police. They immediately began operating on American soil, conducting operations against American citizens. And they definitely still do. Regardless, the CIA reported exclusively to the president. While well, yes, there was a congressional oversight committee, they... Well... If there is one agency of the government in which we must take some matters on faith without a constant examination of its methods and sources, I believe this agency is the Central Intelligence Agency. Senator Richard Russell, head of the CIA Oversight Committee. Hey, do this job. <laughs> no. Isn't that just the most, like, government shit you ever fucking heard? Like, no, it's in your best interest that I not do my job. Fuck you. Regardless, the CIA regulated themselves and only reported to the president. Unfortunately, for whoever happened to be president at the time, the CIA just lied. Constantly. I mean, you gotta look like you're busy, right? 
The CIA told then-President Dwight D. Eisenhower that the Soviet Union had hundreds of ballistic nuclear missiles pointed directly at our great nation. There was a massive missile gap between the U.S. and the USSR in terms of payload, quantity, and just range of these missiles. This so-called missile gap would then be used as ammunition by congressmen to feed the military-industrial complex, leading Eisenhower to even coin the term, as he grew concerned with how dependent the United States economy was becoming on massacre machinery. So, hundreds of ICBMs. In the 1950s? How many did the Soviets really have pointed at us when the CIA told Ike about this missile gap? Yeah, uh, three. There were three. Now, uh, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Uh, ICBMs pointed at your nation are a lot like gerbils up your ass. In that three gerbils up your ass is still way too many fucking gerbils to be having up your ass. But the point remains. There was no gap. And the CIA seemingly intentionally misinformed the most powerful man in the world. Widespread fear caused by this myth uh, would spur the development of many military-industrial complex toys, the coolest among them being the U-2 spy plane. Which is incredibly fucking cool. It's basically a spaceship. It flies at super high altitudes. The pilots all look like astronauts, like they're wearing spacesuits. Uh, they get to pee in a bag, which is just sick as fuck. I hope they get to drink Tang. And it got shot down constantly and would cause international incidents because <laughs> it turns out that flying above other countries is not legal. The U-2 did many, many flyovers of the communist nations during the Cold War, taking photos behind the Iron Curtain, and while the plane managed to disprove the existence of a missile gap, it, it didn't really do anything else. They failed to ever establish a concrete image of life inside the USSR. But hey, you know what? Since when did knowing your enemy ever fucking matter? If the CIA had developed a bigger picture of life inside the Soviet Union, it would have learned that the Soviets were putting little money into the resources that truly made a nation strong. They were a weak enemy. The idea that the final battles of the Cold War would be economic instead of military was beyond their imagination. The missile gap was ignorant fear-mongering, pure and simple. It obsessed Congress, terrified the American people, and had war profiteers' eyes pop out of their head which they would immediately, of course, follow that up, up by saying, Hamana, Hamana, Awuga. And it really obsessed this one, not one president, fucking, what's his name? Fuck. The, um, the sickly Irish sex addict. He... Go ahead. He had a hard-on for killing Castro. Like, the one that was actually terrible, but, like, everyone loves him for some reason. Uh, fuck me, what was that guy's... Oh, JFK. That guy. JFK loved, loved the taste of war profiteer cock, often lambasting Eisenhower for failing to close the missile gap, which did not fucking exist. The CIA of the 50s and 60s did not know anything. They did not know what life inside the Soviet Union was like. They could not give you an accurate measure of how many weapons they actually had. They knew nothing. They did not anticipate the Berlin Wall going up. They did not anticipate it going down. They did not anticipate Sputnik going way the fuck up. They knew nothing about their enemy. And we really didn't until after the wall came back down. The only thing the CIA was good at during the Cold War was justifying their own existence by scaring the American people with things that they made up. Oh, uh, by the way, did you know that the communists can turn people into robots by brainwashing them? Yeah, that one's gonna be higher on the list. Don't worry. But hey, come on. It was the 50s. Homosexuality hadn't even been invented yet. It was a primitive time. People were still having sex with women. So surely as the decades would go by, as technology would improve, as the CIA would mature as an agency, they would not continue to lie to the president and the American people on matters such as weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein. What a monster. I mean, really. You'd have to be a monster to disagree with that. 
used chemical weapons on Kurdish civilians, uh, invaded Kuwait for no fucking reason, destroyed entire villages of Shiite Muslims, and of course, worst of all, he was installed as dictator by the CIA, but that's not even, that's not even what this is. That's not even what this is. But really, the worst thing he did, uh. you know, really makes those genocides pale in comparison, was, of course, selling oil in euros. In 1971, Richard Nixon decoupled the U.S. dollar from the gold standard, leading to a collapse in the value of the dollar. In order to prevent the value of the U.S. dollar from dropping further, Henry Kissinger, famous statesman and 12-time winner of the Rolling Stone magazine's Wait, They're Still Alive award, met with the king of Saudi Arabia with a proposal of what has come to be known as the petrodollar system. And a recipient of the uh, one of the few predictions that I got wrong about 2022 when I said Henry Kissinger will die in 2022. I was wrong, but... I'm saying, I'm making that prediction again. Henry Kissinger will finally pass away in 2023 which is still used by all OPEC countries today. The terms of this agreement dictate that all oil exports by OPEC nations be conducted in U.S. dollars. This, in combination with the dollar status as the world's reserve currency, ensures a constant international demand for dollars, therefore providing stability to Jay Powell's napkins with dead people scribbled on them. In exchange for Saudi Arabia convincing its peers of adopting this system, the U.S. promised military security for the nation, which it has upheld to this day. The U.S. dollars paid for Saudi oil usually is then used to buy infrastructure or tech from U.S. companies, ensuring a constant circulation. Iraq broke the terms of this agreement, as Saddam Hussein was quite butthurt about a coalition of Western nations, led by the U.S., stopping his invasion of Kuwait by beating the ever-loving shit out of him back in the 90s. So, Hussein began exporting oil in euros in the early 2000s, which... That... that didn't happen. We got off topic. None of that is at all relevant to the United States invasion of Iraq in the early 2000s. No, no, that's a conspiracy theory called petrodollar warfare, and we do not do conspiracy theories here unless they're fun. No, 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 no. All that was true. All that, the, the, the things the madman said, those things are true. However, the thing that is implied by all of those true things is not true. It's pretty simple when you put it like that, right? We did not invade Iraq for reasons that make sense. It is that simple. If you think we invaded Iraq for reasons that made sense, frankly, you're crazy, and I don't trust you. <laughs> He's going to talk about... Our, our invention of a new major a little, player, got a, little wacky there. a practice that we, I assume, a practice that we still continue to this day whenever we like decide that we want to, uh, you know, I mean, we, we not only invent new major players within terror cells, but we also actively uh, reignite the terror cells like ISIS-K and shit, you know what I mean? Whenever we want to. Following the kicking of Saddam's ass in the 90s, the United Nations sent weapons inspectors to disassemble all of Saddam's chemical and biological weapons, which he absolutely had at the time. While the UN was adamant that Iraq had no seaburn chemical bi Oh my god, he's playing Max Payne, what the fuck? ...biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons at the time, nor the ability to manufacture them, the CIA disagreed. In October of 2002, I was five. In other noteworthy news of that year, the CIA published their report, Iraq's Weapons of Mass Destruction Programs, which emphatically stated that Iraq has continued its weapons of mass destruction programs in defiance of UN resolutions and restrictions. Baghdad has chemical and biological weapons, as well as missiles with ranges in excess of UN restrictions. If left unchecked, it will probably have a nuclear weapon during this decade. Now you may have noticed, none of that is true. Absolutely none of it. Zero evidence that that was ever found, even though we invaded and occupied the nation for over a decade. Uh, no chemical, biological, nuclear, whatever. None of that was ever found. None of it was ever used. And indeed, even the ability to manufacture that stuff, never found. There was nothing there whatsoever, full stop. Well, until, you know, ISIS developed and used a chemical weapon against us in Iraq in 2016. Everyone was fine, but they did do that. And, but, you know, ISIS would have uh, never existed if we didn't invade Iraq, so. Sick. So, one of two things happened. Either the CIA are incompetent, and their mistake led to the needless deaths of over 4,000 American servicemen and women. Or they lied in order to justify an invasion of Iraq under false pretenses. Let's dial it back. Let's calm down. Less conspiracy, more fun. You know, there's no need for this. Do you like cats? I love cats. Do you like knowing what the communists are up to? I love knowing what the communists are up to. Well, if you're anything like me, then you will be pleased to know about Acoustic Kitty. The CIA of the 50s and 60s was what? basically a Looney Tunes cartoon, but... Oh my god, this destroys every fucking cat lover in one fell swoop. Cat lovers constantly say, uh, cats don't work with cops like dogs do. 
Meanwhile, they're working with the number one cop on the planet, the CIA. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got to pee. I'll be back in a second. I mean, they tried, you know, they wanted to build him in a lab, you know, just the the thickest fucking rabbit you've ever seen. Uh, As a consequence of their insanity, they at one point conceived of the idea of putting a microphone and a radio transmitter inside of a cat surgically so they can eavesdrop on people. They did, and it worked. It cost $20 million to do it. it. It better fucking work after internal testing verified that indeed the cat could record people talking, uh, they decided to test it in the field. They released it in a public park so it could eavesdrop on two men sitting on a nearby bench. And this would prove to be the most difficult mission of this young cat's career. Approaching from the east, its whiskers stiff with fear and its tail lazily swaying in the air so as to fool onlookers into thinking that he was relaxed, the cat prepared his body and his soul for what was to come. It was at this point, presumably, that the two CIA agents in a van nearby labeled We Didn't Kill Epstein, But We're Gonna Kill Maxwell looked at each other and shared admiration and awe at this agent at the top of his game. One of the agents probably said to the other, God damn, he's good. Acoustic Kitty began his approach. Acoustic Kitty was two weeks from retirement. The CIA abandoned the program shortly afterwards, uh, deciding that it would be difficult to train a cat to follow specific directions. Are they that fucking stupid? Do you think they're that fucking stupid? I'm genuinely asking. This information was released in 2001, and they never mentioned an acoustic puppy. So why, naturally? I I can't find a reason, uh, and none come to mind. So is the CIA so fucking stupid that they conceived of this idea that cost them $20 million to implement, and that was putting a microphone and a radio transmitter in an animal. They conceived of that, and it didn't occur to them that it would be immeasurably more successful if they did this to a dog as opposed to a cat. Or did they absolutely figure that out because, yes, obviously, and then intentionally chose not to release that information. They released the cat information in 2001. Nothing about a dog. So this begs the question that we frankly must be asking that I'm ashamed that I have to ask. Is the CIA putting microphones in dogs? You have to tell me if the CIA is putting microphones. During the 1950s and 60s, the CIA conducted illegal medical experiments on American citizens, Canadian citizens, and an unknown number of people abroad. The goal of these experiments, mind control. They wanted to own a man, body, and soul. Absolute, total, and unwilling control of any subject they chose. Speaking of which, I've gotten my first ever sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chiquita Banana. It has come to the attention of those of us in the Chiquita Banana family that our mascot, Fruity McGee, or whatever her fucking name is, is actually racist. Now, as an ambassador for the Chiquita Banana brand, I would like to personally apologize to whoever is pretending to be offended by bananas for attention. Go- I was about to skip it. Go outside. I'm saying this. That's how severely you need to go outside. So, those of us in the Chiquita crew, that's what we like to call ourselves, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. We, we like to have fun. Uh, we have gotten a brand new mascot. His name is Jim. Anyway, be sure to check out our fruit cups or whatever the fuck it is we sell. And remember our famous jingle? You want to sing it with me? The CIA is not connected in any way whatsoever to any produce companies, particularly Chiquita Brands International. The CIA does not work on the behalf of private businesses and deprive people of the inalienable right to choose their own government. The CIA does not use your tax dollars to do the bidding of fruit companies. The CIA does not kill foreign nationals in order to keep fruit prices low. The MKUltra experiments largely centered around the usage of LSD and other hallucinogens, as the agency believed that these drugs could be used to brainwash people. No. Most of the MKUltra documents were shredded, so this begs the question. How do we know about it? Well, it's simple. They're fucking incompetent. The first significant memory took place at Kansas City University in 1966. I was in what looked like a laboratory, and there seemed to be other children. I was strapped down, naked, spread eagle, on a table, on my back. Dr. Green had electrodes on my body, including my head. He used what looked like an overhead projector and repeatedly said he was burning different images into my brain while a red light flashed aimed at my forehead. In between each sequence, he used electric shock on my body and told me to go deeper and deeper while repeating each image would go deeper into my brain and I would do whatever he told me to do. I felt drugged because he had given me a shot before he started the procedure. When it was over, he gave me another shot. The next thing I remember, I was with my grandparents again in Tucson, Arizona. I was four years old. 
Harold Blower was a professional tennis player, admitted to the New York State Psychiatric Hospital seeking help for depression following a divorce. He was then injected with mescaline, a hallucinogenic drug which produces similar effects to LSD, on December 30th, 1952. He died 30 minutes later after a fit of epileptic seizures. Frank Olson was a civilian employee of the Army Chemical Corps who had his drink spiked with LSD while at work with Sidney Gottlieb, the man in charge of the Ultra Project. Following his drugging, Olson was, according to the agency, mentally disturbed. He even told his boss that he intended to resign from the Army Chemical Corps, which produces and tests chemical weapons. He was convinced to stay on, and the CIA referred him to a psychologist in New York City named Dr. Abramson, who was actually just an allergist. While in New York City, Mr. Olson fell 13 stories from his hotel window and died before medical help could arrive. The CIA's position on the Olson matter is that it was a suicide. It was not. Autopsies have shown injuries that are not consistent with a man that would have jumped from a window, but from a man that was pushed out a window. Also, due to the layout of Olson's hotel room, he would have had to take a running start and jumped headfirst through the window. Gottlieb, who remained very active in Olsen's treatment, also wrote a CIA manual on how to kill enemies covertly, and his favorite method was pushing them out a window and claiming they committed suicide. Frank Olsen was a veteran who was survived by his wife and three children who have yet to get the truth. The most overtly disturbing research conducted for MK Ultra. Another incredibly common uh, suicide, especially for like assets that need to be burned or whatever, is... Um, they love committing suicide by shooting themselves in the back of the head multiple times. It's just like, it's so weird how it happens, but it definitely is just, uh, it's definitely suicide. It's not, it's certainly not anything else. It has to be suicide. A very impressive form of suicide. Was the research conducted by Dr. Ewan Cameron? Dr. Cameron treated individuals suffering from depression, anxiety, PTSD, and other things like that. Dr. Cameron's big career goal was proving a hypothesis. That hypothesis being, if you can induce amnesia in a subject, and can make them forget of their traumatizing experience, then the trauma will cease to exist. First, he would put his patient into extreme drug-induced sensory deprivation. This sensory deprivation would range in length from 10 days to 3 months. This would produce the following results in Dr. Cameron's own words. Not only a loss of the space-time image, but a loss of all feeling. In more advanced forms, the patient may be unable to walk without support, to feed himself, and he may show double incontinence. Next, Cameron would administer electric shocks 30 to 40 times stronger than those used by other psychiatrists of the time. A few days of that, and then the patient was ready. They were moved to a solitary ward, force-fed LSD, given minimal amounts of food, water, and oxygen before, of course, forcing them into a helmet equipped with headphones, into which he would play phrases such as my mother hates me, thousands of times, for hours at a time. After completing the treatment of one patient, he wrote with evident pride that the shock treatment turned the then 19-year-old honors student into a woman who sucked her thumb, talked like a baby, demanded to be fed from a bottle, and urinated on the floor. They could have just like, it's, it's more effective to just like lobotomize someone, you know what I mean? Over 100 patients were subjected to Dr. Cameron's cruel experiments. The CIA conducted experiments on prisoners as well, and gave researchers ample freedom and funding to conduct these experiments as they saw fit. The usual MO was taking pre-existing opiate addicts and rewarding them with heroin for their consent to these experiments. They did not know what they were consenting to, therefore it was not consent. If you chose to participate- Isn't this Charles Manson? you'd be dosed with LSD and placed into a padded cell for as long as the researchers saw fit. Usually 24 hours. In one case, seven men were dosed every day for 77 days straight. There was, naturally, never any success in this program, as the goal was total and complete And the control, Unabomber. And that's Looney Tunes bullshit. To quote from The Search for the Manchurian Candidate by John Marks, which I highly recommend, facing up to the fact of the attempt has been agony enough. The heart quails to think of the catastrophe of success. What if Gottlieb and his researchers had succeeded in their wildest dreams, and no secret, nor the life of any enemy, had been safe from the CIA? Owning agents' body and soul, while attractive in theory, would have given us much to regret, to deny, and to hide. 
but Providence is kind, and blessed us with failure. The Bay of Pigs, the total bungling of the Hungarian Revolution, failure to anticipate China's intervention in Korea, failure to predict the Berlin Wall going up, failure to predict it going down, the U-2 spy plane and it's constantly getting shot down, and of course, the obstruction of the Watergate investigation. Their failures innumerable, their methods unethical. I can find no compelling reason for the CIA's continued existence. They don't get results, and they discredit the United States of America. It's a natural decision, purely logic-based. And they're definitely putting microphones in dogs. American servicemen, dead in Korea and Iraq? That's on them. That is their failure, and it is their legacy. I have a great and solemn duty today, as I must assemble a top five list, a duty I do not take lightly. Therefore, I have elected to make the CIA's number one greatest failure Oh my god. But all these things are in the past. Sure, the CIA did unethical things in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, but so what? I'm not a crazy conspiracy theorist. Except for the microphone dog thing. All those things they've done, that's in the past. The CIA is definitely not continuing to conduct illegal operations at home and abroad. So we should continue to fund and empower them. That is not unethical. That is not stupid. They deserve our money and our faith. Yes, everything I've discussed is horrible. I mean, they have dropped off a little bit. Let's be real. They fell off. They fell off a little bit. Like, they're still pretty... Not like a singular thing, but I think after after the Cold War, when you have so many fucking dubs, and then you ha and, and dubs for the military-industrial complex, I mean, not dubs for humanity, clearly. Um, and then also on top of that, you have the War on Terror, which was a major dub for the American military-industrial complex. Now it's like on auto-drive. It's on autopilot. You know what I mean? So it's like the it's like that adage the the hard times uh, create soft men and soft men create hard times. It's almost like they've gotten comfortable in their success and the CIA is a victim of their own success in many ways or at least has like operations that or things that were otherwise relegated to the CIA operate within like uh more common parts of the American military like JSOC uh, so much so that, like, you know, the guys that do shit like this nowadays, um, you know, they're they're failing to execute coup d'etats in Venezuela. They're getting outflanked by uh, Chinese uh, espionage in America. What is this here? Let's, October 2021, the New York Times citing a leaked China cable. They killed a bunch of uh, the the informants, if I remember, in China. Yeah, in New York Times, the citing CIA leak cable uh, reported the CIA had admitted to l having lost a troubling number of informants recruited from countries, including the CIA in recent years, with informants being killed, captured, or compromised. The leak cable comes amid China's recent efforts in hunting down CIA sources to turn them into the double agents. The memo also mentions a breach of the classified communication system that led to spy networks in China being caught, and that some officials believe that treasonous U.S. intelligence officers may be the culprits responsible for the arrests and executions of CIA spies. And then also, why do you hear about the shit they do successfully, though? What do you mean? We know about the stuff that they did successfully. It's not that long ago that, you know, post 9-11 Iraq invasion happened. That was a success. Giuseppe Carbonaro, thank you for the 50 get the subs. Uh, I'm talking about, here's the thing. Uh, nowadays, the shit that you hear about the CIA is like, oh, man, fucking Havana syndrome. If they were more successful, and I, like I said, part of it is a, they're a victim of their own success. If they were fucking more successful, like Cuba wouldn't be in operation. Uh, Venezuela would not be still under the control of uh, the Maduro government. You know what I mean? Like there are Latin American countries where they have been wildly successful in a, for a very long time. They called every step of Russia's invasion before it happened. Yeah, I mean, again, that's not really that's not really that big of a dub. Russia is not the big guy in the room. Is not the big enemy in the room anymore. From the State Department's perspective, the big enemy in the room would be China. You know, um, Russia invaded Ukraine and did something that was unimaginably stupid, and that definitely plays a role in the military-industrial complex. Is endless. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, endless fucking. I mean, that was more of a. That was more of Putin's uh, hand-wrapped 
gift to the American military industrial complex, to be fair. 